Hey everyone! Do you ever wish you had a time machine to go back to those early years of teaching and do a redo? Well, here are my top five tips I wish I knew earlier about formative assessment. My favorite analogy about assessment comes from Robert Steak. He says, when the cook tastes the soup, that's formative. When the guests taste the soup, that's summative. I think back to all those years I waited too late for the summative assessment when I could have done more taste tests and made adjustments earlier. Too often in education, we don't slow down because we're worried about the pace in order to cover everything by state testing in March. But by being strategic with unit planning, you can actually save time rather than lose it. San Francisco Unified has a wonderful model for their units and how they use rich tasks like Mars tasks for formative assessment to gather information about what students know and are able to do. They start with an entry task, sort of like a pre-assessment to check, what do you already know? Then they have an apprentice task. What sense are you making of what you're learning? At this point, you might have to go back and revisit some of those lessons you may have decided to skip. Or you may realize that students are understanding and may skip ahead a little bit faster with your pace. Then they have an expert task to check how students can apply what they have learned so far to a new situation. And by doing all of this, they're checking for understanding, tasting the soup, so to speak. Now to the make or break point of a good formative assessment task. It's the power of the launch. I used to think that formative assessment was just like summative assessment. I hand students a Mars task, they fill it out, I spend my weekend grading it. But when I realized it actually can be a tool for instruction, I needed to change my planning. First, I have to solve it. By solving it, it gives me a window into where students may struggle and where they may be successful. That way I can anticipate their strategies and where I want to modify the task in order to make it accessible to all. Maybe I start off by launching a whole, whole group, having students notice and wonder just about the image or just about the table as they co-craft questions. Maybe I'll do a three read strategy when, and then break out into small groups. Maybe I'll add a hook or a video context that get them excited about the task. Either way, this power of a launch is the key step, step zero and step one in the book, Five Practices for Orchestrating with Rich Mathematical Discussions. One of my final ahas is that you don't really have to grade it. It's more like a census, getting to see trends or noticings rather than giving students a score. So instead of getting bored or tired with this huge stack of papers, in that anticipation and planning process, think about where you might wanna zoom in on the task. Maybe I only want to look at problem number three because that's one that had a lot of student thinking or strategies. Which one had the highest cognitive demand? And then instead of grading, take that and sort and stack all the students' papers or screenshots in this virtual land to notice similar strengths, similar strategies, or maybe possible misconceptions that allow for great re-engagement. Giving students an opportunity to look closer at their work and revise their thinking. Last but not least, when I was so pressured to race to the finish, I often hurt the people who I cared about the most, my students. In the True Math framework under equity engagement, there's a student question, can I hide or be ignored? And too often in those early years when I went lesson by lesson, whether we were ready or not, the answer for students was yes. But when I made the shift in my classroom, valuing the time taken for rich tasks through problem solving, I was able to not only just formatively assess their work, but I was able to cherish their thinking, give them opportunities to revise, and ultimately build that growth mathematical mindset that we've always been striving for. This is Alicia Zari, and these are the top five tips I wish I knew earlier about formative assessment.